Doug Noble, <laughs> uh, long, an author and long-term activist affiliated with Rochester Against War, Metro Justice, Woo! Band of Rebels, and Upstate Coalition to Ground the Drones. He's interested in the Fourth Amendment because uh, uncontrolled search and seizure, as in uh, Nazi Germany, undermines the population, crushing the spirit and putting terror in every heart. It must be stopped. I just want to start by saying today is July 4th, our country's birthday, yesterday, July 3rd, was the birthday of Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, and coincidentally, Franz Kafka. <laughs> Jonathan Schell recently described America's new surveillance net this way. A school of fish swims peacefully in the ocean. Out of sight, a net is spread beneath it. At the edges of the net is a circle of fishing boats. Suddenly, the fishermen yank up the edges of the net, and in an instant, the calm open ocean becomes a boiling cauldron, an exitless, rapidly shrinking prison in which the fish thrash in vain for freedom and life. As the son of a Jewish father in Warsaw, Poland, my recurring nightmare finds me desperately running through the dark streets, fleeing Gestapo jackboots determined to stifle my freedom and my life. So for me, the Fourth Amendment is less about surveillance and illegal searches, however important, than about, quote, the right to be secure against unreasonable, warrantless seizure of my very person. Right. The frightening erosion of this most fundamental right, presumably protected by the Fourth Amendment, is my focus here. Before I discuss more chilling violations of the Fourth Amendment, I want to point out how we lack its protection in some of the most common circumstances of our everyday lives, often with dire consequences. Schools. The Supreme Court recently determined that random, suspicionless searches and detentions of students are allowed by the Constitution in public schools since the warrant and probable cause requirement of the Fourth Amendment, quote, this is Anthony Scalia, I'm quoting, would unduly interfere with the maintenance of swift and informal disciplinary, disciplinary procedures undercutting the substantial need of teachers and administrators for freedom to maintain order in the schools. So forget the Fourth Amendment in the schools. Shopping malls and workplaces the protections of the Fourth Amendment do not extend to illegal searches and seizures by non-governmental agents. Essentially, individuals may be subject to unreasonable and otherwise illegal search and seizure at the hands of a host of private actors, such as landlords, employers, store employees, and private security guards, of which there are three times as many as police in this country. Moral security guards routinely, routinely engage in profiling or other constitutionally suspect behavior when searching or detaining suspect shoppers. Since these are not government agents, the Fourth Amendment does not apply. Police stop and frisk. Stop and frisk has been an exception to the Fourth Amendment since the 1968 Terry v. Ohio case, when the Supreme Court drew dubious distinctions between a stop and an arrest, and between a frisk and a search. A stop is clearly a seizure of a person, yet one that is deemed justified if the police detect what they consider suspicious behavior. And people, of course, in high crime and minority populations and neighborhoods are stopped and frisked far more disproportionately. Once again, the Fourth Amendment does not apply. Even more chillingly, immigration and customs officers in ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement teams, conducting immigration raids are routinely violating the Fourth Amendment. Seven member teams of ICE agents across the country regularly make house calls, usually in pre-dawn hours, in SWAT light raids, with shotguns, automatic rifles, sometimes crawling through open windows. In place of search warrants by a judge, which the Fourth Amendment would require, ICE agents carry administrative warrants issued by one of their own. 
The raids are supposed to be aimed at fugitive illegal immigrants who have committed criminal acts, but they're regularly used to rope up non-criminal, undocumented workers. One study that examined 700 arrests between 2006 and 2008 in Long Island, New Jersey, found two-thirds of the arrests were circumstantial, happenstance. They were mostly of Latinos, whose only crime was a civil one of working here illegally. Many ICE agents also have to meet quotas. Here in upstate New York, raids by ICE teams take place regularly at our bus stations, our train stations, and even at churches on Sunday morning. On any given day, there are 33,000 people detained by ICE, all in violation of the Fourth Amendment. They spend an average of 26.5 days behind bars, and many of those bids are run by private security organizations like corporations like Corpor Corrections Corporation America. The frantic families of those picked up frequently have no idea where their disappeared loved ones is being detained, often hundred miles away at places like Batavia Detention Center, and it's a big rally there on July 30th. I'll you know, send something out. <laughs> Uh, a report from Detention Watch Network found detainees held on immigration charges frequently get thrown into isolation for weeks, etc., etc., etc. All this constitutes yet another egregious devastation. Were those people that were being detained American citizens? Of our fourth American right, amended rights. Right. National Defense Authorization Act. With chilling consequences for all Americans, Obama's recently renewed NDAA now authorizes the detainment of persons captured within the United States of America without charge or trial. That's not authorized by law in this country. The federal government can imprison any person who is part of or substantially supported Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, or associate forces that are engaged in... Hostilities against the United States and coalition partners. The NDAA also authorizes the use of military tribunals for personal, persons captured within the U.S. In the military tribunals, as was the case with the medieval Inquisition, the prosecution can introduce into evidence confessions obtained through torture and also secret evidence unavailable to the accused. In these proceedings, virtually every basic right is ignored. Among other rights, the proceedings violate the Fourth Amendment right to exclude evidence obtained through torture or other unlawful means. The warrantless detention and year-long solitary confinement of Bradley Manning and his military commission trial now take place in Fort Meade in Maryland, offer a sobering depiction of what may lie in store for the likes of Edward Snowden and the rest of us under the NDAA. I'm just about done. It goes without saying that a warrant was never issued by a neutral magistrate for the arrest of the Guantanamo de detainees. Recent WikiLeaks documents have demonstrated how random the roundup of innocent Guantanamo detainees really was, often involving bounty payoffs and false accusations. These extrajudicial seizures themselves, as well as the regular use of evidence of pain through torture, are a flagrant violation of the Fourth Amendment. Finally, as an anti-drone activist, I must also mention that the extrajudicial warrantless assassination of American citizens by weaponized drones is perhaps the most profound violation of their Fourth Amendment right to be secure in their person. To conclude, this litany of wholesale evisceration of the Fourth Amendment should worry everyone. Justice Robert H. Jackson, former Chief United States Prosecutor at the Nuremberg Trials, wrote in 1941, Uncontrolled search and seizure is one of the first and most effective weapons in the arsenal of every arbitrary government. Among deprivations of rights, none is so effective in cowing a population, crushing the spirit of the individual, 